All right, so now we're going to talk about uh, least squares problems. Okay, so let's consider a general uh, linear system. Okay, um, AX is equal to B. Um, but we're not going to necessarily assume that uh, the matrix A is square, okay? So A is going to be some sort of matrix which isn't necessarily a square matrix. And then uh, X is a vector of unknowns, as is usually the case. Um, so there are n unknowns, and then b is the right-hand side, um, and they're going to be m of them. So essentially what's happening here is that you have uh, m, which is the number of equations, number of linear equations, uh, but they are n uh, unknowns, or n variables. Okay. So let's uh, say something a bit, um, say a little bit about the solvability conditions for this. So let's look at uh, three cases. So if n is greater than m, okay, so you have more unknowns than equations. Right, then the system is uh, what's called underdetermined. Okay, and so uh, sort of infinitely many solutions. Uh, possible solutions exist. And so, uh, um, so we can't really solve this. Um, most of what we've seen so far uh, has been the case where n is equal to m. Okay, then uh, as you know, there is a unique solution if uh, the matrix A is invertible. Okay, and then uh, the way we uh, one way to approach this is to obtain the solution, say, using LU decomposition. Okay. Um, possibly with pivoting, right? So, um, so even if A is invertible, it's not always the case that you can do LU, it's like without uh, some sort of pivoting. Okay, um, so let's look at the third case. So the third case is uh, if uh, m is greater than n, right? So m again is the number of equations. So you have more equations than unknowns. Uh, So, uh, so in general, right, uh, no solution exists. Um, and then the question is, uh, is there something we can do in this case, right? 
let's look at an example of a problem where you have more equations than unknowns. Uh, and then it's like uh, work through the process of deciding how to go about addressing this question. Okay. So let's consider the following problem. Okay, so let's say we have data points. x1, y1, all the way up to uh, xm, ym. Okay, and so let's say the following. So the data is noisy. Um, but we believe that the data comes from, it's like uh, some sort of functional form. mean by this uh, possibly is that maybe the data satisfies some sort of linear polynomial exponential relationship, for example, right? Okay. All right. So, uh, and probably the simplest example you've seen is if you have noisy data and you assume that the data uh, satisfies some sort of linear relationship. So the question is, can you do, uh, you know, it's like, can you find some sort of linear relationship which, you know, best describes the data, if you will. Okay. So the intuition behind this is, uh, or the way you might approach this problem is the following. So. You pick some function class, so you pick a type of function, and uh, choose parameters to minimize the distance will between the function and the data points. So let's look at an example of something like this. Okay. So let's look at uh, a specific example, which is least squares uh, with linear functions. Okay, so you have the following data. Okay, again, a pair of points. I mean, uh, so n uh, sort of, sort of. Um, points, it's like on say the xy plane, x1, y1, all the way up to uh, xm, ym. And we're going to assume that all these points, it's like up to some sort of noise, uh, lie on this straight line. So I'm going to assume that uh, y is some a0 plus a1 times x. And I'm trying to find the best a0 and a1 uh, for the data which is given to me, okay? All right, so, so we know the following. So if there was no noise whatsoever, right, then I could find an A0, A1, it's like such an A0 and A1 such that every one of these M points, it's like satisfies the relationship Y, I is equal to A0 plus A1, Xi, right? So uh, if the data
was exactly linear, then what happens is that uh, yi is equal to a0 plus a1 xi for i going from 1 to m. Okay, um, So I can write that um, condition uh, as a system of linear equations, but well, it is a system of linear equations, so I can write it in this kind of matrix vector product form. So, so let me go ahead and do that. All right, so I want to write this as some sort of A matrix times the unknown vector A0, A1 is equal to the right-hand side. Okay. All right, so uh, I need some way of writing A0 plus a, A0 plus A1 uh, Xi, okay, as a matrix vector product. So I can do this one, uh, do a column of ones, and then have a column of X1 to Xm, okay, and can easily check that when I do this matrix vector product, right, I get A0 uh, plus A1 X1, A0 plus A1 X2, and so on. And the right-hand side is this Y, okay, so this is Y1 to ym, okay? So again, this system of m equations can be written in this matrix uh, equation, all right? So this is A, all right? So this is an m by 2 matrix, and this is a 2 by 1, and then this is B, all right? Um, which is an m by 1 matrix. Okay, so again, you have a situation where the number of equations is equal to m, right, which is greater than the number of unknowns. Uh, well, usually you assume that's greater than the number of unknowns, right, which is 2. Okay, so the system is overdetermined. And in general, there is no solution, All right? Um, of course, I say in general because it could so happen that you have no noise whatsoever, right? And in which case, you know, all the points which you have, it's like lie on the line, and, and there's, a, there's a single line which uh, fits perfectly. It's like um, over the data, right? Um, but that's a very unusual circumstance, so that's why I said in general there's no solution. Okay, so what I want to do instead is to allow myself some flexibility uh, so that not every equation holds, but I would like to make that error as small as possible, okay? And uh, so when we looked at uh, root finding methods, for example, we introduced this idea of a residual error, right? So that's the extent to which the defining equation is satisfied. So for example, I can take this expression, um, yi equals a0 plus uh, a1xi, move everything to the left, right? So that's yi minus a0 minus a1xi. That should be zero. Um, and I would like to maybe minimize that as much as possible. Okay, so I can construct um, some sort of function which um, minimizes the error. Okay, so let's call this uh, unknown here z. Uh, I'm not calling it x because x is used uh, in, in this problem. It's, I guess, the x component. Okay, so I'll call it the unknown z instead. Okay, so, so let's see how to deal with the fact that, in general, no solution exists. Okay. So this equation here looks like a times z is equal to b, all right? Okay, so the alternative is the following, all right? So I have z, which is this vector of unknowns, a0 and a1, all right? Okay, and I want to find z such that some error, which I define to be the norm of this vector, az minus b, right? So if 
uh, if the data was exact, it's like this vector would be a zero vector, the norm would be zero. Uh, but in general, it's not a zero vector, so I'm just hoping for this error to be minimized in some way, shape, or form. So um, I'm going to find it's like the data or the coefficients, it's like to the linear function or more generally the linear equation which minimizes this error or this residual error. Okay, so, um, and there, there are of course many ways to measure um, the size of a vector, okay? So let me just introduce a few of those for you, okay? Um, so this definition is for the error norms or error measures. So there's the first one is the um, infinity norm. Okay, so E is the max um, over I of Yi minus uh, A0 plus A1 Xi. Okay, so, um, <coughs> so what's happening here is that you have this line and you have the data, right? And what's happening is I'm measuring this distance uh, between, so this is sort of the EI, right? It's uh, sort of like the component of this vector. Um, it's the distance between the actual data point, the Y value, the actual data point, and what was predicted, it's like by the regression line, okay? Um, and I'm going to maximize over all the data points to see what is the largest error, okay? So this is called the infinity norm. It's one possibility. The second one is the one norm. The error is equal to the sum from i equals one to m of the absolute value of the uh, components. Okay. And then perhaps the most common one is the two norm, uh, sort of squared. right, which is uh, the sum from i equals one to m of the square of the error. Okay, all right. So let me just make a few remarks about this. So the first one is that, uh, as you might expect, the infinity norm, which says that I, you know, I'm going to measure the error by the worst case scenario, right? If even one data point is very far away, um, I'm going to penalize that thing very sensitively. So the infinity norm uh, is very sensitive to outliers, okay? So for example, if you're measuring data, it's like, and then at one critical point, you know, someone sort of kicked the sensor, it's like, and that data was very far off. Um, the infinity, if you're using the infinity norm to measure the error, it's like the, um, the regression line is going to be significantly skewed um, by that presence of outliers, um, which, um, you know, for whatever reason, it's like the noise was much larger than normal, right? Okay, so, so that's something to be aware of, right? Uh, it is extremely sensitive to these kind of uh, data points, which for whatever reason, it's like have a unusually high level of error, okay? Um, and the second one is the one norm. Second remark is the one norm, right? Which is that the, uh, the norm is continuous. but uh, not differentiable at zero. And, and that just follows from the fact that uh, it involves absolute values and the absolute value function uh, is continuous, but not differentiable at zero, okay? Because the absolute value function looks like this, right? Say so this is the norm of x, this is x, right? It's, the function is continuous, but it's not differentiable at zero. Okay, 
So, um, so the one you're probably most most familiar with is sort of the two norm. It's like the Euclidean distance, right? Uh, and so let's see what happens uh, if you do um, least squares minimization. Oh, so in that and minimization, sorry, minimization with respect to the two norm is oftentimes referred to as least squares, uh, for the reason that you take the error pointwise, you square it, and you sort of take the sum and you minimize that. Okay, so this is uh, this is called least squares. It's like minimization. Uh, so let's look at what happens uh, to the regression problem when you do uh, least squares minimization. Okay. All right. So let's do that. So I want to minimize the two norm, okay, with respect to A0. A1. So I'm going to choose A0 at A1 so as to minimize this least squared error. Okay? So the first order of business is to write down the least squares or the square error, right? So E is the sum from i equals 1 to m of yi minus A0 plus A1 xi. squared. Okay, so in order to minimize this, I'm going to um, use the fact that uh, if the minimum is in the interior, uh, then the derivative, the partial derivative with respect to the parameters uh, vanishes. Okay, so I'm going to take the partial derivative of this error function with respect to a0. And I want this to be zero. And the same thing is true. I want to take the partial derivative with respect to this error measure with respect to a1, and I want that to vanish. Okay? All right. Um, and if you haven't seen partial derivatives before, the basic idea is you take the expression, and if you want to differentiate with respect to a0, I think of a0 as the only, the, the only variable that's like which can vary, and all the rest of the things are constants, right? Okay. So. Um, in any case, so I, if I differentiate this, I get um, minus 2 sum from i equals 1 to m of um, yi minus a0 plus a1 xi equals, and, and that's equal to 0. Okay, so that's one of the equations. So now I want to differentiate this back to a1. Okay, so this is minus 2 the sum from i equals 1 to m of xi times, so I should make the remark, okay, so the 2 comes from taking the power of 2 down, the minus sign comes from differentiating respect to a0, right, that gives me a minus sign because there's a minus sign here, all right, and then the xi here comes from differentiating respect to a1, the a1, that gives me a minus um, sorry, differentiating respect to a1, and that gives me a minus uh, xi term, right? So there's a minus xi and there's a 2, all right? And then yi minus a0 plus a1 xi. Okay, so those are the equations which have to be satisfied. Um, so let's try to work with this. I'm going to um, all right, I'm going to cancel out the factor of two in both cases. Okay, all right. So the equation looks like the following. Um, so I'm going to take this equation and rewrite it. So it's going to be the sum from i equals one to m of a zero plus a one xi is equal to the sum uh, from i equals 1 to m of yi. That's this equation rewritten in this way. Okay. And 
um, the second equation, okay, involves this, okay, so this is the sum from i equals 1 to m of a0 xi plus a1 xi squared is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to m of xi yi. Okay, all right. So I can simplify these two equations a bit more, right? So this is, um, um, okay, so I'm going to try to get rid of the sums or, well, what I'm trying to do is I'm going to try to isolate the A0s and A1s so it's clear what equation they satisfy. So this is A0 times M, right? Because there's a sum of A0 M times, so that's A0 times M. And then there's a sum over I'm going to take the a1 out, it's again going to sum from i equals 1 to m of xi, right, plus a1 sum from i equals 1 to m of xi is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to m of yi. Okay, and then I can do the same thing here, right, a0 sum from i equals 1 to m of xi plus a1, the sum from i equals 1 to m of xi squared is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to m of xi yi. Okay, so what that gives then is the system of uh, equations as follows. So this gives a linear system, which is of the form, uh, it's a 2 by 2 system. So m sum over xi, sum over xi, sum over xi squared, uh, a0, a1 is equal to the sum of yi, sum of xi, yi. And so I can solve this uh, sort of two by two system for a0 and a1. Okay, so uh, the next thing we're going to do is to talk about how you can get equations like this more generally uh, for problems where you're trying to minimize this uh, square of the um, <coughs> two norm of the error. Okay, um, so let me just stop here for now.